Thanks once again for joining us today for Friday's edition of Alaska Weather, 30th day of December 2022. And first uh, graphic here, hazardous weather graphic, red shaded area there, St. Lawrence Island, Bering Strait Coast. That's for a blizzard warning that's currently out there and expected to remain out through 3 p.m. Sunday. And that's for areas of blowing snow that are being kicked up by northeast winds gusting to 50 miles an hour. And again, that's out through Sunday afternoon. Otherwise, to the south, uh, let's see, the Susitna Valley, Manuska Valley, Northern Cook Inlet, Anchorage, Palmer, and the Western Kenai Peninsula, as well as all of the Copper River Basin under the influence of a winter weather advisory, but that doesn't kick into effect until Sunday and Sunday night, first next year. And that's for snow and freezing rain expected in the uh, yellow areas there and winds gusting to 45 miles an hour. And then for the western Prince William Sound area, eastern Kenai Peninsula, Turnigan Pass up into Turnigan Arm, eastern Turnigan Arm, Whittier, those areas, that's a winter storm watch. And that uh, starts Saturday night and continues through Sunday and uh, anywhere up to six inches of snow, rain or freezing rain expected. Turnigan Pass could see 15 to 20 inches of additional snowfall just to watch at this point in time. And from there, going to satellite imagery, a couple of low centers, uh, bands of clouds too, one moving across Kodiak Island, bringing some showers to that area, and another center farther to the south, not all that organized. <clears throat> and then a stronger low south of the Queen Charlottes, and that spanned, spun a band of moisture up into the southern panhandle earlier today with uh, rain and rain and snow mixed uh, occurring across all the southeast coast over the last 24 hours out to the west all the cold air way out from the northern bering sea and then southwestward there to the far western bering sea down toward chimney and out to otherwise milder conditions with a little bit more uh, northeast and northeast flow in the milder air there for the Pribilofs and into the uh, central Aleutian areas. It looks like some clearing over the Fox Islands today in Alaska, Nikolsky, Dutch Harbor, pretty good day there. Clouds for the Pribilofs, not too bad for the Alaska Peninsula and the Bristol Bay as well. Generally cloudy here over south central Alaska with uh, not much in the way of any precipitation occurring and uh, anywhere in the interior seeing some clouds and still uh, temperatures below zero in the central interior with some clearing and then moisture moving northward uh, across uh, the eastern side of the state and then some clouds dropping into the eastern arctic coast as well and pretty gusty winds from uh, point hope cape lisbon through the bering strait to st lawrence island as well as along the exposed areas of the southwest coast uh, wind speeds at Tin City there gusting 45 miles an hour. Cape Ramonzoff had a peak wind gust out of the northeast at 53 miles per hour, while Point, Point Hope and Savunga both seen about uh, 35 mile an hour wind gusts. So, and again, uh, looking for 45 mile an hour wind gusts, Savunga gamble up to the Bering Strait coast through Sunday. Otherwise, uh, pretty unsettled conditions with a variant of uh, quite a vary, variance of uh, precipitation. Precipitation. Rain and snow showers, just plain rain or just plain snow showers over the Aleutians and the southern Bering Sea with the uh, snowfall levels coming down on those northerly winds uh, west of Amchitka Island. Otherwise, uh, scattered snow showers across uh, the Copper River Basin, south central Alaska, basically dry north of the Alaska Range as well as west of the mountains too. A few isolated snow showers over the Kobuk Valley, nothing much there, and then some flurries, fog for the uh, central and eastern arctic coast today and uh rain and snow be, uh, ending or tapering off this afternoon across the panhandle areas 
where uh, Ketchikan picked up about two-thirds of an inch of rain. Fall Sitka had eight-tenths of an inch. Otherwise, a few inches of snow fell uh, around the Juneau area, Mendenhall Valley, that tapering off. Had actually, Juneau at the airport mixed with rain and ended with just some fog during the mid-afternoon hours today. And then uh, about two-tenths of an inch of rain fell at Kodiak Island, but not much of that during the day today. And for tonight, another trough uh, will swing up. They're actually that uh, low center southwest of Kodiak, and that trough there will uh, just weaken, and the surge of moisture will come in as that next stronger system makes an appearance there on the bottom of the chart with the frontal system to the south. And the one out west drops southward right across the Aleutians. Rain and snow showers uh, possible, especially out over the western part of the Aleutians. Better chance for some precipitation for the Pribloss tonight, but it'll be light and in the form of rain or snow. Not much change over southern Alaska, except look for the precipitation to begin to increase, especially for the western North Gulf Coast areas tonight, right along the coastlines that trough shifts northward and kind of showery for the uh, Pano, but dry with light winds, much of the interior all the way to the Arctic coast. And for tomorrow, not much change. Uh, most of clearing will occur over the central interior, but winds will be on the light side. Dry conditions again right up to the Arctic coast. Kodiak Island increasing wind and rain throughout the day, as well as the uh, North Gulf Coast in the afternoon, and eventually the Panhandle late in the afternoon as that uh, next system pushes northward. Bering Sea, about the same as tonight and today, just uh, scattered rain and snow showers and areas of snow. Uh, snowfall levels coming back down towards sea level for the Pribloffs in the afternoon hours. And then for Sunday, more northerly wind flow out over the Bering Sea can pulls more cold air southward. So probably by late afternoon or evening, you'll be looking at just plain snow for Adak Atka out to Shimia, rain and snow mix for the eastern Aleutians. Periods of light snow, north winds may be gusting 30, 35 miles an hour for the Primloss. Much windier though through the passes of the Brooks Range into the northern Koyukuk and Kobuk Valley. You see tighter gradient there. Could be some areas of blowing snow, but nothing additional with a fair amount of clearing up that way. Otherwise, uh, southern Alaska sees an onslaught of wind, especially ahead of that frontal boundary there. Look for storm force winds ahead of that in the marine zones all the way down, at least onto the north coast of the Panhandle. Prince William Sound has a storm warning out for Sunday as well for east winds at 50 knots with uh, pretty high seas there. And uh, up again in the interior, pretty dry north of the Alaska Range, increasing rain and snow for the southwest interior around uh, Bristol Bay, mixed of rain or snow but winds will be lighter and then north to northwest winds increase over the eastern Aleutians but it won't be all that strong maybe gust of 30 miles an hour with uh, temperatures slowly falling but light winds for the Arctic coast with variable clouds there in the north slope as well most of that wind will be through the Brooks Range passes maybe a little to the south into the northern interior valley areas and for lows tonight, uh, lower 30s over the northern Panhandle, mid to upper 30s to the south, and 0 to 5 below in the Copper River Basin, and anywhere from uh, 10 below in the Cuscoom Valley to 10 above, lower to mid 20s, Bristol Bay, mid 30s, Kodiak Island, teens and 20s, south central Alaska. And for the highs tomorrow, in the 20s, south central Alaska, up near freezing for Homer Sildovia, 35 for Seward, and 0 in the northern Cuscoom Valley, 5 to 10 for the Co Copper River Basin, mid-30s for the Bristol Bay Area, near 40 Kodiak Island, mid-30s northern Panhandle, lower 40s to the south now toward the coastline, followed by lows above freezing for all of the southeast coast on Sunday, with uh, temperatures hovering near 40 for the central coast there. Otherwise, uh, 10 below to 15 above across southern Alaska, warming as you head to the south, upper 30s Kodiak Island, followed by highs in the teens for the Copper River Basin, 30 to 35 South Central Alaska now, near 40 for Homer, Soldovia, Seward, and uh, uh, Valdez, mid 40s Kodiak Island, upper 30s Bristol Bay, and upper 30s to mid 40s for the Panhandle up to the north, lows tonight, 0 to 15 below, all the way to the Arctic coast. And for the highs tomorrow, staying below zero, central eastern interior about zero to 15 below, and single numbers out to the west near zero for the Arctic coast, followed by lows, still low below zero, but not too bad over the interior, coldest in the east. And uh, St. Lawrence Island, a little colder there, two degrees, the forecast high for Savunga and Gamble Sunday afternoon. 
And out to the southwest coast for Saturday morning. Lows 10 to 15 along the coast there, but milder in Bristol Bay, upper 20s for the Perbolofs, and lower 30s western Aleutians for snow showers there and mid 30s for the eastern Aleutians, upper 30s for Sand Point, and then highs tomorrow, 41 for Unalaska and Sand Point, otherwise upper 30s, set 40 for ADAC, mid 30s for the Primlofs, and 15 to 20 for the southwest coast. Lows near 10 for the southwest coast, mid 20s for the Primlofs, and lower 30s for the Aleutians and the Alaska Peninsula, about the same, lows 30 to 35, so downward trend in the temperatures out that way through the weekend, followed by highs. 30 for the Perblos, mid teens for the southwest coast. Otherwise, uh, in the 30s for the Aleutians, upper 30s for Shimia and Attu. Alaska Peninsula, upper 30s to possibly near 40, and well into the 30s for Bristol Bay. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First line weather graphic for Saturday morning. IFR Brooks Range across the north slope to the Arctic coast and then that extends down into the Yukon Flats, Porcupine River area and also out west into Kotzebue Sound and uh, Buckland area. Otherwise areas of EFR in the central interior, most areas of uh, IFR across southern Alaska with marginal VFR and some isolated VFR there along the western Alaska range. Otherwise IFR, Northern Bering Sea and the southwest coast, Nunavak Island, Pribilof to the Alaska Peninsula, northern three quarters of the Panhandle IFR, and that extends up along the eastern North Gulf Coast into the Copper River Basin. Mostly marginal VFR for the uh, southern and southwestern Bering Sea and all of the Aleutians. And for the uh, Saturday afternoon time frame, looking at, uh, let's see, IFR again from the northern Seward Peninsula across Kotzebue Sound, much of the North Slope and Arctic coast and into the Yukon Flats. Increased uh, VFR from the morning hours there over the uh, interior areas on down to northern Bristol Bay, Cusquam Delta and uh, areas of IFR with marginal VFR for the Copper River Basin, North Gulf Coast. Looks like VFR breaking out for the Susitna Valley into northern Cook Inlet as far south as uh, Kenai, Soldotna area, Sterling, and then for the uh, Panhandle, IFR extending over toward Yakutat, northern Bering Sea IFR, southern Bering Sea and Aleutians, marginal VFR in the Alaska Peninsula, east side of Kodiak Island, IFR. And that area of IFR increases as more moisture comes northward in southerly flow there. All of the Gulf of Alaska, North Gulf Coast, Panhandle, IFR, Kodiak Island, that pushing up into Southern Cook Inlet, Kamishak Bay, and beginning to move into Kachemak Bay. We'll move into Resurrection Bay and into uh, Eastern Turnigan Arm. Otherwise, pretty good VFR over the interior areas with some scattered marginal VFR. And uh, IFR Central North Slope to the East Central Arctic Coast. And for the afternoon, IFR up there over the Central North Coast and uh, North Slope areas. Not too bad in the interiors. A little bit of marginal VFR there, the upper Yukon River Valley in the flats. Otherwise, pretty good VFR right down to the Southwest Coast. Southern Alaska, Marginal VFR with areas of IFR, in, especially in the usual places, North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, trying to push into the Southern Copper River Basin. And Lynn Canal Glacier Bay, IFR, IFR, Bristol Bay, Alaska Peninsula, the Pribilofs, on up across St. Matthew Island. Passes, Anatuvik, and Adigan, both IFR for the day on Saturday. Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR. For rainy, looking marginal for the day on Saturday, while windy, optimistically, will be VFR most of the day. Isabel, IFR, be improving to marginal VFR. Mintasta, marginal VFR. And uh, marginal for Tanita as well. Portage, IFR. And for Chilkoot and White, IFR. Moving on to freezing levels. Not too much to look at here at the surface just south of the Primloss but well north of the Aleutians and uh, back along the Alaska Peninsula Kodiak Island just south of the North Gulf Coast and 2,000 feet in over Prince Oils Island. 
As far as icing goes, uh, most of the moisture is coming up across the Gulf of Alaska, just reaching the North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound. So some isolated moderate rime icing possible there. Southern Cook Inlet, Kodiak Island areas and the Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula. And then out over the Bering Sea, um, also some icing possibilities there in a pretty large area, but whatever it is will be pretty isolated as far as moderate goes, mostly of the light variety there for the Aleutians and Bering Sea Pribilofs. Moving on to the jet stream, got a 110 to 120 knot jet coming up across the Northeast Pacific, taking a turn to the east there and then diminishing as it approaches the west coast of the Panhandle at about 80 knots and turns northwesterly or heads off to the southeast. Otherwise, light flow, Bering Sea in the interior. 9,000 feet, uh, good southwest flow there coming toward the Panhandle that kind of diverges along the North Gulf Coast, 40 to 45 knots. And at 3,000 feet, again, the uh, strongest wind still to the south with that low center south of the Alaska Peninsula. But looking at pretty good easterlies, 45 to 50 knots. North Gulf Coast, 35 knots there for the southwest coast. Turbulence, considerable moderate turbulence for the uh, western North Gulf Coast, Kodiak Island, Bristol Bay, and out over the Aleutians. So my heart is definitely racing. I don't know about anyone else's. This is the stuff nerds dream of. 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, That's gonna 5, happen. 4, 3, 2, That countdown you just heard? We'll get back to that in a minute. Last episode, we saw the epic launch of ISAT-2, NASA's newest state-of-the-art ice-observing satellite. But now that that's in orbit, the pressure to deliver results is on. Between launch and, you know, the first ground returns, you know, it took 17, 18 days or something like this. You know, it's a time when you're quite nervous. Nine years ago, Dr. Torsten Marcus took over as the lead project scientist for ISAT-2 during a time when the mission needed a champion. We start fighting for a mission over, you know, for nine years now. So when ISAT-2 was turned on for the first time 18 days after it was launched, only then would the science team know if the whole thing had worked. And it did. Sounds like there's a lot of noise in the background. That's because Torsten is being interviewed from a plane 1,500 feet in the air. IceBridge was tasked with the job of bridging the data between the end of ISAT's mission and the beginning of ISAT 2, about a nine year difference. The goal is that it would run until ISAT 2 launched and then would have overlap with ISAT 2 as well. So we can get a really long, well calibrated time series from IceBridge. As the deputy project scientist for Operation IceBridge, Brick works closely with Torsten to make sure the two missions are syncing up. The timing was everything at, 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 during that mission, which was a real challenge because not only need, do we need to... Basically what you need to take away is getting an airplane and a satellite in space to fly over the same flight path at the same time and collect matching data is really, really hard. IceBridge was tasked with two objectives. Check the accuracy of ISAT-2's data over land ice and over sea ice. They were able to lock in the land ice data fairly quickly in the mission, but the sea ice data... It was really tricky. We waited day after day. Do we fly the sea ice? It's still on our list. Seven, six, it's five, happen. four, three, two, one. Mark on the overpass, zero, four, three, five, three, five, zero. Here's what just happened. A plane 1,500 feet up and a satellite 308 miles up measured the same sea ice at the same time. This moment finally linked veteran mission Operation IceBridge's data to that of its new sister mission, ISAT-2. Two projects that, until now, were separate for nearly 10 years. It's a very satisfying feeling because you do something that is meaningful and in the, in the, in the bigger picture and Satisfied. Our search for knowledge doesn't end here. 
Grace Follow On and ISAT 2, the two satellite missions that launched this year, will continue to bring in incredible data for the foreseeable future. The steady drumbeat of campaigns in the field goes on, but most of all, the people who look for answers will never stop searching. And from our perspective, it's pretty clear why. What is your favorite planet in the solar system? My favorite planet is the planet Earth. What? Earth? <laughs> really? The Earth, obviously. My favorite planet in the solar system? Earth, right? We live on it, it's a really important one. Favorite planet is Earth. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so Why? W when you look out at the other planets, they're absolutely fascinating. They've got all sorts of interesting systems going on. They've got dust storms. But then when you're on another planet, looking back at Earth, I mean, it's just incredible. Whenever you go in different places, it looks so different, so amazing. It's just, I love to find that Earth is just a very special planet. This is our home. We've seen things far beyond the solar system. But even with all that, even the amazing things we've seen, one of the most amazing is the Earth itself. It's got to be Earth. It's got to be Earth. It's got to be here. I like the polar regions up here. Of Earth. Earth. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. It's very boring. Earth is good. Earth is good. We live here. It sustains our life. I'm not going to turn my back on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's got water. It's got ice. It's got um, it's got vegetation. I mean, it's just it's rich with life, uh, and so. Studying Earth is, is, is a very, very rewarding career. And I think if we were on any other planet, we would be trying to get to Earth as quickly as we could. Coastal water forecast starting out Saturday on the south coast, southerly winds 15 to 20 knots on the north coast, south to southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, these at about 10 feet, northern inner channels, northerlies at 15 knots, Stevens Passage, northeast at 20, and Clarence Strait should see southeast winds at 20 knots on Saturday with 7 foot seas, and then for the uh, First day of the new year, storm warnings there on the extreme north coast out of the east and southeast at 50 knots. Otherwise, south to southeast winds 40 knots for the central and south coast of those seas, 30 to 38 feet. Gale warnings for Clarence Strait, southeast winds 35 knots. Small craft advisories for Stevens Passage, southeast at 25. North winds 20 knots for Lynn Canal. For Prince William Sound. <clears throat> East winds 25 knots, seas 4 feet. For the North Gulf Coast, east winds at 30 knots. Gale warnings for the Barren Islands and Kamishak Bay. East and northeast winds in those areas up to 40 knots. Gale warnings for Cook Inlet. Northeast winds 35 knots. North of the Forelands, northeast at 20. And for uh, Sunday, winds increase further, uh, 30 knot northeast winds, northern Cook Inlet, southern Cook Inlet, northeast at 45 knots. Storm warnings for Kamishak Bay, winds out of the east at 50 knots. Storm warnings also for Prince William Sound. I know it's hard to believe, I have trouble believing it myself, but looking for east winds of 50 knots. And storm warnings for the eastern North Gulf Coast for southeast winds of 55 knots. 35 knots southeast winds for the western North Gulf Coast. Kodiak Island, east to southeast winds at 40 knots with 15 to 18 foot seas. And for Bristol Bay, winds will be northeast at 30 knots. Alaska Peninsula, same forecast, northeast winds 30 knots, 7 to 10 foot seas. And for Sunday, for Kodiak Island, east to southeast winds at 25 knots. And wind swinging around to the northwest of the Alaska Peninsula on Sunday for uh, at 25 knots. Bristol Bay still northeast at 30. 
<clears throat> for the Eastern Aleutians on Saturday, northeast winds 20 to 25 knots. North to northeast winds for Adak and Atka 20 knots. And small craft advisories for the Western Aleutians. Then on Sunday, still small craft advisories, Western Aleutians. In fact, the entire Aleutian chain will be seeing northwest winds at 30 knots with seas running 10 to 14 feet. And for the uh, Pribilof Islands on Saturday, east winds 20 knots, sea 6 feet. Small craft advisories and brisk wind advisories for the southwest coast for northeast winds 25 to 30 knots. And northeast winds at 30 knots for St. Matthew Island. Gale warnings for St. Lawrence Island for northeast winds at 35 knots. And then Norton Sound, northeast at just 20 knots. And moving into the first day of the new year for the uh, Pribilofs, northwest winds 30 knots. Good for small craft advisories there. Small craft advisories also for St. Matthew Island, north winds at 30 knots. And the southwest coast, north winds 30 knots as well. See along the Cuscombe Delta coast in the ice-free waters up to seven feet. Gale warnings for St. Lawrence Island for north winds at 35 knots and north at 30 for Norton Sound. For the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, east to southeasterly is 10 to 15 knots for Saturday. Light northeast 10 knots for the central coast. Western Arctic coast northerly is 15 to 25 knots and from Cape Thompson to Wales north at 30 knots. Gale warnings for the Chuck CC on Sunday, north to northeast winds at 35 knots. Western Arctic Coast brisk wind advisories for northeast winds at 25 knots. The central Arctic coast, northeast at 15. And then for the east side, east winds 20 to 25 knots. And for tonight, again, there's a blizzard warning out for St. Lawrence Island and the Bering Strait Coast through Sunday for areas of blowing snow due to northeast winds gusting to 50 miles per hour. Otherwise, uh, more rain and wind coming into Kodiak Island with that trough and then again with the frontal system farther to the south. And for Saturday, again, increasing wind, rain, and rain and snow across southern Alaska, especially the North Gulf Coast, and eventually into the Panhandle. Otherwise, pretty dry over the interior, all the way to the Arctic coast, with most of the clearing over the central interior. It stays uh, breezy and showery over the Bering Sea. Winds become more northerly, and colder air comes southward over the Bering Sea on Sunday. Wind, rain, and snow, winter storm watches out for the uh, western Prince William sound area. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.